My name is Ryan. Yes. My name is Michael. Wait, Sorry. I didn't even realize he started. <laughs> You're just like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm oh. scrolling through my shit. <laughs> what, what did you bring us here today? Oh, this is my 1987 Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.3-16, and it is uh, slightly wrecked. Just a little bit, but I mean overall, like everything else though, it's like yeah, super um, clean. When I bought it, it, came out of Freeport, Louisiana. It's a two owner car, 106,000 miles. It was really well cared for until it got nailed by a Hellcat. A Hellcat nailed it? Yeah, apparently a Hellcat. That's, that's the story goes. That's how the story goes. <laughs> Pretty much like I was trying to make a U-turn on like one of those highway, two-way roads. Uh huh. And then he didn't see the Hellcat coming and it just nailed the front clip on the side. Oh wow, that's... That's kind of, that's really unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Fortunately though, it meant I could get a cheap 16 valve. Yeah. With the dog leg five speed. And uh, how many miles does it have? Now it's at 107,000 and so or so. 107, wow, that's really, really Super low. low for 87. Yeah. Is that like your lowest mileage Currently car? Currently it's my lowest mileage car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can we check inside? I have, I have a lower mileage car, but it's not as impressive as this. Wait, which one is your lowest mileage car? My SVX. It's got, oh, it's got 93,000. Your manual swap SVX. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> it's super clean. Oh, yeah. Honestly, like, Everyone and the back. Everyone loves the place back seats. The two place back seats? Yeah. Two, yeah. like, buckets. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, everyone loves seeing that. That's cool. Place seats four. But, I mean, having sat in the back seat, it, it, it cradles you pretty well. Like, whenever... Because Ryan's a little bit of an aggressive driver. <laughs> 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 not as bad as Ian, but I mean the seat holds you in pretty good. So. And a dog leg -like gearbox. Yeah, same one as the E30 M3 in Europe. Yeah. Is it hard uh, getting used to it? Not for me at least. I, I, I think it's pretty easy. How did you find it? Well, so realistically one of these had been one of my dream cars for a really long time since I was in probably high school or so. And uh, the prices have just been soaring on them and it's just been for falling further and further uh, from me being able to get one. However, I was on Marketplace one day, as it often happens, and I'm scrolling through, and I see an ad for a 190E. It's listed as a 2.3-16. No, it's listed as a 2.3. That's it. I actually don't remember. I have to double check that. But so, the only picture of Just, it is from this quarter panel here forward. And the hood is up, and uh -huh. it's obviously wrecked. The bumper is missing. Um, and, you know, everything's all jacked yeah. up. It but was... But I could see this flare and this panel right here. I look at it and I go, that's a 16 valve. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was, was those were like telltales. It was listed yeah, as a 2.3, yeah, just, just the base model, like just the basic, the base model that they sold here in the United yeah. States. And this is a manual. And like all the ad said was like, was wrecked, AC works. That's all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> and so of course- AC I, works, <laughs> I say less. I need to message the guy for more photos. Um, and lo and behold, it's a dog like five speed car. I could tell it's like an older dude, so I didn't really want to pry and ask too many questions. Yeah. So I went, all right, I'll go check it out. When are you free? Saturday? Okay, sounds good. They're really, really rare cars in the States. They only officially sold about 1,700 cars here. And they did sell automatic, so not even all of them are manual. Um, I just found that out like two hours ago that yeah, they all, they'd yeah. made some automatics. They did. It is pretty unfortunate. I would not want to drive one of these. I know. It was a lot more damaged here. Um, with the use of, with some persuasion from a, a come along and a tree, we got it kind of straightened up enough, got the bumper on, um, and yeah, I've just been driving it around a bit since. And, uh, yeah. I mean, apart from just this, this, just this and this, it, everything else is like super yeah, mint looking. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, I put new headlights on it and stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, those are not the headlights from the rack. Oh, yeah, okay. I was like, wow, they're still in great shape. <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> we, 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 found, we, we found these corner lights at the junkyard literally last weekend. <laughs> yeah. But what we were shocked about was the grill is like fine. That's the original oh, grill for the car. And that's the original bumper. And the bumper is also the original one from the car. Apparently it got hit here and it just threw the bumper off the car and mm -hmm. somehow it's mostly fine. I mean, this is yeah. like a little bit wavy. There's a crack there, but I mean, that's like fixable. And though. there's oh, that. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, 
Considering that's a two thousand dollar front bumper, I'm pretty happy. God. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, parts for these cars are not cheap, unfortunately. Funny is like <laughs> the guy that owned it barely knew what he had. Like. Yeah. So some funny stories <laughs> on that. So the guy I owned it, I bought it from, uh, Hubert. Nice, nice, nice older guy. Um, he owned the car for about twenty years actually. Um, wow. And so his story was he bought it for his daughter for when she graduated college, but then she never learned how to drive stick. And then, so that was kind of an interesting story. I, he just wanted to have it for himself and had an yeah. excuse for it. But anyways, he's like, oh, I love the car. He's like, man, it was, it's pretty cool. Like, he's like, I know it's only a four cylinder, but like when you get on it, it like, it really goes. Just yeah. that, that, that like, boomer mentality yeah, that four like, cylinders are inferior. Yeah. yeah, he's like, it really goes. And he's like, you know, it's not like a regular car. He's like, you know, when I first bought it, he's like, I went to the parts stores and I was buying parts for it. Uh -huh. But then all the parts I was getting were, were wrong. And he was it's like, not just an ordinary yeah, 190e. Exactly, it was not an ordinary 190e. He would have to go to the Mercedes dealership and order parts there. And mm -hmm. he said he didn't really know much about the car until one day the parts store guy goes, wait, you have this car? Like after he puts in the VIN number, he's like, yeah, I have this car. He's like, where is it? He's like, it's outside. He's like, dude, you know, this is a really special car. This is a race car. They race these cars in Europe and stuff like that. Yeah, no, he was oblivious to that when he bought it. Which is wow. Really cool. And it's from Shreveport, Louisiana. And the car was like bought new in Shreveport, Louisiana by a doctor. I just, I don't understand how this car was hiding there for that long. And these are the wheels from... <sighs> so that, yeah, those are the wheels that are from the uh, Retrospect 190E <laughs> base model car. The car came on some horrendous 17 inch wheels that I really couldn't stand. Um, and so I, I'm still looking for the right wheels for it, but currently we're on some base model 190E they're, wheels. The, the, the advantage of these wheels is they're not cringe. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the biggest thing is they don't hit the bodywork. Oh, yeah, that's oh, okay. Because when how it's pushed was, in, the old tires are like scraping stuff. And I was like, yeah, and you don't want to mess up that body kit at yeah, all. Rare, can you, expensive. Can you pop open the, the hood? Yeah, of course. Is it 167? I thought it was more than that. So in Europe, they had a higher compression and 180 horsepower. Unfortunately, the American market America. always gets cocked with these things. You know? <laughs> so we got lower compression and only 167 horsepower. <laughs> Wow. Largely original other than self-leveling suspension deleted for people who know. It just, it feels like so special just looking at it. Yeah. Old school twin cam head. Like just knowing like, you know, this is more of like a homologation car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty funny to me because like a lot of people don't realize that this is the car that you have to thank for having the E30, E30 M3. Yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't for this car, the M3 wouldn't exist. And, and uh, it, the, I mean, great. the M3 was developed because when Mercedes came out with this, it was essentially Mercedes put, like putting out something that's BMW's MO that's pretty much better than the stuff they were putting out. Because mm -hmm. you, you have to think, the E30, like even though the 190 and the E30 3 Series came out at the same time, this was designed from the ground up like with a completely new suspension geometry and everything. And the right. E30 is essentially built upon the platform that the 2002 established in the 60s. And so how Mercedes essentially made a sports sedan that's better than anything BMW was making, which, and BMW's MO is sports sedans. Right, that's what they're known for. So they had to, and that's why there's like so many differences between an E30 M3 and a regular uh, E33 series is because they had to do what they had to do in order to make the M3 beat this car. Yeah. Yeah. Not for sure. I like how uh. The ABS. <laughs> yeah. Proudly displayed. ABS. <laughs> wow. It was pretty wild. Like when I first bought it, or when I first uh, went to go look at it, I was talking to the guy. I was like doesn't drive anymore right and he's like oh no it drives fine I'm like yeah i drove it home after it got wrecked i was like does it leak any fluids he's like nope and i was like oh <laughs> interesting okay um and that made me feel a lot better about it obviously um, right because i was driving it around the day after i brought it home like we just straightened it up got the bumper put on and everything and just drive the radiator was i mean you know you replaced the radiator but the radiator was completely fine before pretty much that. completely fine yeah it had like a little dent in it but like mm -hmm. It held water. The side mirror. I, is this? Oh, the small. The stubby is one. this like a just a 190e thing? I know no, the W124. The 124 has the same thing. I just li love how they didn't care about it make being like the same. I yeah. wonder if it's just to have better visibility. I'm assuming maybe. Probably. I don't know. Because yeah, this one's taller. It it's taller. taller, and it's also very curved. Mm. 
Oh my god, you even still have like the underbelly like tray oh, and everything. The underbelly tray, yeah, which is pretty rare like to find one that hasn't been discarded. Yeah. The, the underbelly tray on my E300 <laughs> is long gone. And I love how like it's pretty closed off at the bottom too, like the yeah. the front yeah, fascia. Yeah, the Can we hear it run? She purrs really good. That's so cool. Something random. Hmm. So those two middle supports on the hood are $16 specific. Yeah, Why? These models don't have that. Honestly, I don't know the answer to that. But yeah, they only put that on the $16. Like added strength, maybe? It's my only guess. I'm not really sure why the hood needs to add strength. You for the high speed that the car needs to go? Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. Huh. So I'm actually going to transfer those to the new hood. Okay. It's otherwise the same hood. All right, so let's go for a drive then. <laughs> yeah, so since these were race cars, they had extra gauges equipped, oil temperature, voltage, and a lap timer. Wow. Yeah. That is too cool. Yeah. I had to rebuild the LCD on it, but it works. Because I'm, I'm assuming you can't really just buy a new one of those anymore. anymore. So your goal is to put the new hood on and the fender and whatnot? Yeah, I need to get have the frame straightened, have my fenders painted and the hood painted and get it all put back together, right? Because the fenders are black, right? <laughs> the fenders are black. And the hood is white. Huh. And yeah. the car smokes silver. I was gonna say the, the bolsters are pretty it's pretty aggressive on here. So these do have an LSD. From factory, which is pretty cool. It's like, what gear ratio? I mean, what uh, rear diff ratio was it again? I think it's 327 on these. Wow. I think it's 327. It's 327, but there's no overdrive. Well, short ratio, five speed box. Yeah. But I mean, the, the purpose of that was that so that whenever you're racing, that uh, you could shift between second and third pretty quickly. Exactly. In theory, as in racing, you're in second and third the most, so. Sounds so good it sounds amazing. for a force. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god! It's just, it's just like just pure mechanical and just intake yes. noise and just, yeah. it just sounds so good. Oh yeah, yeah. K Jet makes wonderful noises. Like K Jet induction noise is like one of my favorite sounds. Would you prefer this over an E30 M3? I mean, personally, because of who I am as a person, yes. Because I'm, I'm a Mercedes, though. Yeah. I love BMWs, too, but no, this is it for me. It, it is pretty epic, though, like, the, what happened in the years following with the Evos and BTM and them mm -hmm. racing them back-to-back. -back. Yeah, um, they just kept one up in each other. Yeah, the challenge that happened between the two is pretty sick. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm just, since I've been a kid, I've been a Mercedes guy, and so this is pretty I much... Mean, we got it from our dad. Our dad was a Mercedes guy. Right. This was basically as good as it gets for me. So what's basically the future plans for this car? Um, obviously eventually fix the accident damage. Um, and then really like I'm kind of at an impasse of like I'm not sure which direction I want to go. Like I said, I could, part of me wants to do what I usually do and lower it and put some cool wheels on it. Um, part of me is like the thing is so nice, clean, low mileage and stock. Just clean it up, fix it, get it, keep it stock. Mm -hmm. But it's like, ah, it's no fun, right? Or yeah. again, like, kind of do for like the rally look. Oh, uh, that's too cool. <laughs> that is too cool. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, maybe honestly, I, maybe I won't lower it. Honestly, because you could just get like different tires for those wheels, right? Raise it up. I was thinking about. Oh, well, not to say I wouldn't do these. I'd get slightly different wheels, but like similar ones. Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah, if I can get some like bigger tires or something. Raise yeah, the front up a little bit. Get the seven lines. Because that would be pretty cool. I think I think the rally look would like, be. Yeah, I just you never see anyone do that, so it's kind of. I like, think yeah. I would go with the route of modification just because it's a previously wrecked car. <laughs> I mean, even even though it's yeah. like a clean, it's yeah. clean title. The accident was reported, but it didn't it didn't brand the title. Oh, so it didn't. I, yeah, no, it didn't. Title. Yeah, it's a clean <laughs> title. Yeah. But, wow. Yeah, just the fact that it's not a perfectly preserved car just because, i mean it. it's 
perfectly preserved other than the boop on the snoot. Beep. <laughs> the boop. You know? <laughs> but uh, I think at this point, I, I would go with modify it. Now, which direction do you want to modify it? Like you were saying, that's kind of up in the air, isn't it? Yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. Yeah, because I mean, you also have like three other cars. Yeah, so four, a few, few other cars, <laughs> several. So yeah. it's like yeah. you have what three lower ca lowered cars and the Land Cruiser, which is lifted. Oh, I have right? two lifted trucks. Oh, series. that's right. I forgot about and the. Then Land I have. Yeah, the two lower. Oh yeah, cars. you do have the Land Rover. So you have the Land Cruiser, the Land Rover, the other Benz, uh -huh. this Benz, uh -huh. the Volvo. Volvo, and the Volvo. Yeah. Which that one's, we also need to do a video on that one day. Well, yeah, it's yes. back in town now. Yeah, yeah. It is, uh, that, one's, that, was, that one's pretty cool. Okay. I think that's pretty much it for this one, for this video. We know a lot of cars, like, it's bolted to the dashboard, like, not the actual car. On, like, older cars. Really? Yeah, I didn't know like, that. just, like, riveted to the dashboard. So, like, my friend, he had a Volvo that the dashboard was swapped. And so the dashboard had the wrong bin on it. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, Eurospecs get a 7k red line. Yeah, we get tugged on that.